All right, welcome to the channel, and today we'll be talking about the Amps and Sound Agartha. But not the Agartha from before that I did an impressions on, but the Agartha 2.0. And so this one is it's got some new upgrades to it and some different parts and what have you. Uh, Justin from Amps and Sound has generously sent this to me to do a quick video on and impressions prior to going to Can Jam New York City. So this will be at Can Jam New York City. So if you want to listen to it and you're in that general area vicinity during that time frame, this will be there. And actually, I will be there as well, helping Justin with his booth. So that'll be fun. If you want to come by and say hi, that'd be great. Anyhow, back to this lovely little thing. And by little, I mean it's not little. It's very heavy and very large. Uh, <laughs> but it's uh, a 300B, same as the Agartha. So with that, let's dive into this amp my experience with it i'm not going to go into the technicalities of it or anything like that as far as like what he's done to upgrade it or what have you that's kind of over my my head so <laughs> i'm just going to go into my experience with this little amp that i've had for a bit and we'll start off with headphones by the way seriously guys gals this thing grumpy goose it's beautiful beautiful headphone stands my favorite love this thing uh yeah fantastic headphone stand beautiful anyhow sorry <laughs> sidetracked <laughs> starting with the verite opens we will be discussing how this sounds and so i have it off of the low z initially and then i'll kind of work my way up to the high z which will be low z 16 32 100 ohm and then high z and i also discuss a little bit later on about this little fun switch that he has up top which is the uh high and low and what that is, well, we'll go into it in a little bit, but let's get into some sound. I'm actually utilizing my TT2 right now with uh, Cobuzz, and I'm actually controlling it with my phone. So, kind of fun, little, little deal there. Let's dive into this, and I think the first track I'm going to listen to is not necessarily going to be the most audiophile track, but I really dig on this track. It's... Um, so, and actually it just recently was brought to my attention, it's a new track and a new artist to me, but the artist is Teddy Swims, and this track specifically will be 911. So I'm on low Z right now, and honestly I'll pause it for a second just so you, I can kind of discuss this. Low Z, before I hear volume, like before I hear any kind of tube noise, I'm roughly, and the Verites by the way are notoriously, for whatever reason, can pick up a lot of, uh, tube noise but I'm only just starting to get it roughly about probably about 60% volume 60 70% volume is where I'm starting to just bear and I have to really listen for it but to really make it discernible is probably closer to that 75 80% is when I start to like okay I can actually hear it without having to strain so that's low Z I'm gonna pop this up to 16 and at 60% 65, 70, 65, 70% is when I start to first becoming aware of it. And this is with no music playing, by the way. And then up to 32, I'm getting it pretty much across the board with this one. So 32 is where it starts to, I can hear, it's just that kind of, I can hear it across all the different volume levels. And this is with my setup here currently with the Verite open specifically. And that's at 32, so let's jump up to 100. And at zero volume, I can definitely pick it up. And it's there, like it's definitely there. But it's not like a, a obnoxious tube noise. It's more just like this very slight little like ants eating snow, but it's very minimal. And then up to high Z, and that's when it becomes a little bit more like interfering a little bit in the high Z range. So I'd say the probably the optimal would be the 32. And in fact, let's play some music real quick. Okay, at 32 ohms, once music's gone, the, the, the little bit of noise I am picking up is pretty much non-existent. I don't really notice it, except for if it's a very quiet point in the track. Let's go back up to 100 ohms and start again. Okay, so with the 100 ohms, I felt that the Verites came the most alive, uh, and like, it's just, the engagement's definitely upped. It's very fantastic, and 
the tube noise, once again, it's it's minimal enough to where I'm not, it's not a bother, it's, it's just there, right? Like, and it's only really noticeable in very quiet parts of a track or in between tracks. And even then it's like, huh, I, I don't really, it's not, some, it's not enough for me to be thinking it's a problem. And that's gonna vary person to person as far as what you like or don't like or that kind of deal. But for me, honestly, at 100, the 100 ohm tap, it's just like that engagement. Yeah, so that engagement is just lovely at the 100 ohm tap. Minus the fact that, you know, whoever your, or whoever, <laughs> whatever your preferences are as an individual, that could factor in. But to me, I mean, that's, that's choice. And so with that being said, let's, uh, I'm going to go, I think for this kind of thing, actually, let me switch over to the HD800s real quick. Let me put this back on the Grump Bruce. So let's switch to the lovely, my wonderful Frank the Tank HD800. Man, so you might have seen me wearing these uh, little kind of ties. They're just photography ties, and I wear them on my wrist mostly just because for stuff like this, I'll, I'll randomly use them to tie things down, and it's nice to have them on hand. And I usually carry them in my bag. I usually have a bunch, but these things are freaking awesome for everything. So you just do that, and then, and boom, you got your nice little, especially for this HD800 cable, which is like 10 feet long. And so let's pump this guy back up to 100 ohm tap real quick. And I'm going to put the same track, still listening to 911 by Teddy Swims. Ooh. So with the HD800s, the thing I noticed the most is it has that beautiful, magical stage and imaging. But then with the Agartha, it's just, oh, man, the presence is more forward. Engagement and richness is upped up up to up <laughs> the engagement and richness is just it's cranked up a bunch and the low end is actually uh, the h800 has always had a nice punchiness to it but the thing about the h800 is it's always been kind of anemic it might have that dynamicness but it's not really like a slam or like a super bassy headphone with this it still has that punchy cleanliness that the h800 has but it has a little more richness to it there's a little more oomph behind it there's a little more enjoyment there so yeah, big, big fan of that. I will say though, of the headphones, like my Verte Open though, is just, it's a whole nother game though, man. Like that one, it's just, across the board is super fun, engaging, lovely, lovely sound with the Agartha. Yeah, so let's, I'm gonna throw that one back on, just because I honestly just love the way these things sound with this, and in general, these are my favorite headphones. So, and then we'll talk about what I'm hearing. So I'm gonna put this back to the 100 ohm range, and so that's where I'm gonna kind of keep it, the 100 ohm range, for this general impression and experience with this thing. And so, uh, let's jump to, so we'll do another quick like listen with the 911 and then I'll discuss what I'm hearing with it. So with the, the way that this presents sound, like the lows are just really lovely, rich, punchy, but they're not boomy or bloomy. The mids as well have that like a nice clean, but also like a nice rich, enjoyable sound to them. But it's not overly done. It's it's this almost reminds me more of a like a like a warm solid state to be honest. Um, but this the tubes add just a nice richness to it and the nice like just a lovely sound. I don't know how to explain other than that. It's just super engaging. Uh, I really enjoy it. It's this very nice layering of engagement and richness to to the whole range like it just has this kind of je ne sais quoi i guess <laughs> it's so hard to describe the stuff sometimes but let's get into uh i'm gonna do susan wong vincent for testing of the kind of like sibilance and highs and so in this one she has like a really lovely voice but it can be the guitar and her voice can sometimes come off as a little bit bright <laughs> okay so uh yeah, like the, the the highs, they have this nice, especially with this track, it has a kind of a weird resonance to the track, but the guitar plucks and the in her vocals, they just have a nice sound. Even though there's like that resonance still there, it just sounds really good. Like it's not overdone. It doesn't even kind of push too far into the highs where it's like that peaking, it doesn't really peak as much. And there's like a, 
maple syrup, I guess. <laughs> like, a, you know, this rich, like, sound to her vocals. It's just really beautiful. And the way that the guitar plucks happen and the detail, too. That's the other crazy part is, like, the detail I'm picking up in this. Like, the, you can hear the sliding of the strings, the plucking of the guitars. Let's uh, try, you know, my go-to for the next part. We'll talk about a little bit of imaging and separation, what have you. We'll do my signal and the noise uh, by Go Go Penguin, and then we'll push into the rest of this. Oof, man, okay. Uh, it's just clean, beautifully clean. Like I can hear exactly like the foot stomp on the pedal to get the, the kick drum to hit and get that bass in there. And then the stand-up bass, you can hear it separated over and just like a little bit you know, further forward and, and off to the side. And you can hear them strumming the bass and then you hear the, the um, snares and like, it's just whew, the piano off to, oh man. Like, yes, this, this is definitely a very, uh, the holographic thing I was talking about. This really presents really well, especially paired with the, the ZMF Verite Opens. Um, and like I said, I have it turned off for now, so I am picking up a little bit of that tube noise, but it's not, annoying it's not horrible it's not something that's really bothered me greatly the exchange is that engagement with the music like oof, man it is something else I, I'm just the detail and the image separation and the way you can pick apart like the stage and where it's at and the depth of it like it just has this beautiful holographic sound and it's enjoyable like beyond the, like it's super just I could close my eyes listening to this and just kind of lose time so definitely a beautiful beautiful pairing and I, I think so I don't have any planars here with me currently on hand but I've been told by Justin and some other people that have heard this with planars and they say that is the the combo which i believe because um, i've heard with the uh, head headphone and the rad zeros from rosin audio uh, those were fantastic with some of justin's amps like they just oh man and then that tube noise actually for whatever reason you don't really pick it up as much with the planars which is kind of boggles my mind because usually you know planars and tube amps don't necessarily go well together uh, and i have heard the rad zeros with the not this specific amp but with some other of his amps and and it was one of my favorite pairings so i can attest to that at least okay so let's go into the overall sound and so for right off the bat i'm going to tell you the main way i listened with the agartha 2.0 was with the corn scala speakers and they oh man they just just oh, screamed like not in a scream like in a piercing bad way but they just oh man fantastic i loved it and i still like that's my preferred way of listening with this so with headphones it's easier for me to close out the world around me and, and f just kind of focus in and lose the rest of the world, right? Like I can close my eyes and it's very intimate, very like engaging. And where speakers are also very intimate and engaging, there's more like factors from the outside world that will contribute, right? Like I can have, I can hear my daughter more, or I can hear, you know, people running around, or there's you know, there's things that can interrupt it a little bit if you're not in a, you know, dedicated point in time listening to it or what have you. And so, I mean, take that for what it is, but I will say the majority of the time was listening to this with my coin scholars and I love them. Like that, that combo is beautiful. And with the headphones, though, it's same. It's like the uh, same thing. <laughs> I really love that sound. It's super rich, engaging, and lovely. Uh, and I'm kind of gushing a little bit, but I am a fan. I'm a fan of this the sound, this house sound, if you will. So the build of this is it's beautiful. He did a really great job with the the way he did the lines, where he had the case work done. And I've always liked Justin's aesthetic. It has just a really nice with that the black top plate with matte black. It's just, it looks really beautiful. It's really pretty. And the the wood choices, and he has little black ends on them. It's just really, really beautiful looking setup here. The 300Bs look really cool because they're just so big for as far as like build and aesthetics go. But at the same time, I also think they're a little bit too much for my personal preference. Uh, but it is, you know, here nor there. And overall, though, like the full quality of it is just really well done, really well made. Um, you can tell it has like, like that nice craftsmanship and care put into it in building it. Uh, the volume knob has a, a 
kind of a fun ratchety kind of attenuator and so it's a aka it's a stepped attenuator so it's got the bunk bunk you can you can hear as it goes all the toggles so you have a speaker to headphone toggle on the back and then you have this uh, low high toggle and so going into that that's kind of the features about this so the speaker to headphone i love that that you can just toggle so you don't have both playing at the same time which you would that would be horrible and and the fact that you can do it with just the toggle and not having to pull any kind of cables to have it work the way you want it to work is really lovely and then the fun i call it the fun switch this low high switch that he has here above all the taps adding more power to the the, the signal and channel it pushes everything forward and it gives you just a little bit more presence it's fun. It kind of reminds me of kind of like the equivalent of like an iFi bass boost, but without, it's like, but across the board instead of just in boost, uh, instead of just in bass boost. Um, so that's that fun little toggle there. My main use case with this amp is with uh, low power requirement speakers. And then speaking of also, it also has the two hum pots behind each of the 300 B's here and I never really I mean I got them dialed in initially but they really didn't need it too much but they have that to where you can you can <laughs> dial in the if there's a hum that you're getting hum for whatever reason you can use those to dial in and remove the hum and I didn't really have too many issues with it in fact I had zero issues with it I actually they're set dead neutral on both and I had no problems I have no hum from that but you can kind of tweak them to see what that actually does and you do get hum as you move them to either side uh, but I can see like a like the benefit of having it on your desk with a really nice set of uh, near field speakers or bookshelves, and I think that's those are the two main things I could see it being utilized in. But once again, my main use case was basically down here in the living room with the corn scholars because I loved it so much. So yeah, with that being said, I think I will wrap this up and stop gushing over this and hopefully everyone that's in the new york area that's going to can jam will stop by and say hi to myself and justin i'll be at the like i said the amps and sound booth there at new york city's can jam so looking forward to that and we'll catch you all on the next one cheers All right, welcome to another. Ugh.